Good morning and welcome to Chapel 4th grade. Thank you for those in your classrooms joining us for our special Easter Chapel and Grandparents Day celebration. And for those of you at home, welcome to you as well. Um, we're going to start off our Easter Chapel a little bit differently than we usually start off chapel with our liturgy. So if you guys would stand with me as we read about who is Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. What does that mean? It means that Jesus has power over death. And how do we live out this truth? We believe that Jesus rose from the dead and gives eternal life. John 18, 2 through 4. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with the disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and, and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going on to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Let's pray. You guys can have a seat. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to um, talk about your death and resurrection in chapel today. God, we pray that our eyes would be open and our hearts and our ears would be open to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Welcome, everybody. Looks like we have quite a few already joining us. Coach, can you look at the soundboard and bring down the headset just a little bit? All right, much better. So as we start thinking about our first two readings, the first two verses, a little bit more, um, the first two verses, there were some pictures that I want you to kind of think through. The first one, Coach, can you find the one that says Lord's Supper? Let's see. So what, what Ms. Sanders and I want to do, it may not be there, um, is we want to walk you through the very last week of Jesus's life. This is a really big deal. So it should be the one right under um, 
the timer, and then the very first, looks like a picture. You see it? Maybe. So we want to walk through several things that Jesus did. And one of those things that he did was he, he gave us the Lord's Supper. And so he's with his disciples, and he takes bread, and he breaks it. And he gets a cup filled with wine, and he shares it with his disciples. And essentially, he tells them that this is how I want you to remember me. My body's going to be broken, and my blood's going to be spilled, but I'm going to do this in love for you. And then as we see this whole idea what we want to talk about today is that Jesus is our unexpected king. So what are some things that a king would do? Fourth grade in the house, what are some things that the kings would do? Kings would protect their citizens. Great. What else? They would have power and they would use that power. Good. Say it one more time. Okay, make laws. Sit on a throne. Take everybody else's money. Maybe, possibly. Give me one more from this side. Set taxes. Set taxes, so take everyone else's. Y'all are on the same page. Give me one more. Say it again. Kill them. Kill them. Wow, y'all are, y'all are thinking about some pretty mean and awful kings. But as we think about that, that's actually a really interesting idea because a lot of our world expects all of the things that you mentioned a king to do. And so as you're thinking about it at home and as you're thinking about it in the classrooms, think about the things that you would expect a king to do. And as we think about our king, one of the things that our king does is he breaks bread and serves his disciples. The next thing he does is he washes their feet. How many of you like feet? Some of you like, how many of you, better question, how many of you don't like feet? Maybe that's the better question. My daughter Melody can't stand them. So here's Jesus, and at this same meal, what he does is he, he wraps himself with a really big towel, like bigger than a beach towel, gets some water, and he washes the disciples' feet. Does that sound like something a king would do? No, not at all. When we start thinking about having power and making laws and sitting on a throne, and even some of the conversations about taxes and taking other people's money, those are the things that we would expect a king to do. But what we find our king doing is washing feet. And then we find our king in a very odd place. We find him in a garden, and we find him praying. And as he's praying, he's having a really, really hard conversation with God, Father. And in this, what begins to happen next is super crazy. Because what happens next is the king, one that we know as the king, is betrayed by his friend, one of his good friends, and comes up and says, that teacher over there, when I give him a greeting, like a Mediterranean greeting, like a peck on the, on the cheek, what, I, what I'm going to do is tell you that he's the one, arrest him. Now, we wouldn't expect a king to be arrested. We wouldn't expect anything that our king, we know our king to be, to go through this. And so when we get to these next steps, what we understand is that Jesus is about to walk through some really, really, really weird stuff for a king. And we know kind of what's happening next. But when we start thinking about living for this king... One of the things we've got to do is we've got to choose to build our life around how he does things, not necessarily how the world does things. So now we're going to move into a time of worship, one song at this time, and we're going to sing, We Want to Build Our Life. So let's go ahead, fourth grade group that's up for this one. Y'all come on up. Martin's class. All right. Martin's class is coming up. Worthy of 
John 19, 14 through 16. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Crucify him. He's a king. Pilate, the guy who's in charge, the governor who's in charge, says, what should I do with him? And the crowd, remember last week when we were talking about Hosanna in the highest, and we were talking about Palm Sunday, and I was laying stuff out on the... So that same crowd is now going, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Doesn't sound right, does it? So our unexpected king 
is now abandoned by his people. Matthew chapter 27 gives us even more where it sounds like they're not only picking on him, they're being rude. And so I want to show you something here. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns so that it sat on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. And they spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. So purple is a royal color, is a robe of royalty. And so they beat him and they, other gospels tell us they pluck out his beard and they punch him and they hurt him and they put this robe on him and then they mock him. Oh, hail king. And so they're doing all these terrible things and they think he's crazy and he is letting it happen. Our unexpected king is letting them do these terrible, terrible things. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews, and it's meant to be picking. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. You know, as I think about that, he's hanging on the cross for about three hours. And as he's hanging on the cross for about three hours, he... he, He's going through all of this because he wants to show his love to us. Jesus didn't have to go to the cross, but he chose to go to the cross so that he could bleed out for our sin. The beauty of the cross isn't that it happened, but that Jesus willingly let it happen. A little bit further in the same gospel, he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he gets down to this point where he says, he cried out one more time, the very last time, and he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks split. Even the, all of creation is responding to the fact that Jesus dies on the cross. And when we begin to understand that what happens at the crucifixion is such an enormous thing because Jesus himself gives his spirit for us. Now, I want you to think about that. He gives his own life on purpose. Those of you who are in the classrooms, I want you to think about that. Who's the person that loves you the most? And they would willingly die for you, right? Right? Jesus loves us all that same way. And so as we go to our next song, as we think about what we're doing next, this is the part where we begin to step back and we go, Lord, you really are the way, the truth, and the life. And the beauty of that for us is that we can see him in doing things that only he can do. Our unexpected king dies on a cross. Our unexpected king is doing something that no king should do. This isn't a throne. This is a cross. So let's sing the way together as Mrs. Sanders and Miss Davis's class. Y'all come on up.
25, 5-7, through seven, the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So one of the things, especially as we see Mrs. Davis's class still waiting, one of the things that the women who were doing, who were there, they were waiting for something, but they didn't know what. When they showed up, the verses right before that, they showed up and expected Jesus's tomb to still be closed. They expected Jesus's tomb to not be 
able to get into. And when they get there, what we see just verses before that is that the tomb, the stone has been rolled away. There's an angel there, and he says, don't be afraid. I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He is risen. Now, I want you to think about that. They're coming and expecting the, the one that they have loved, who they have followed, they're expecting him to still be in the tomb. And our unexpected king does the most unexpected. Our unexpected king rises from the dead and is now presently today, right this second, sitting on a throne. And so as we begin thinking about him being the way and the truth and the life, now it really begins to make sense. He is the way for us to get to God the Father. When I read earlier where the veil was torn in two, all of a sudden the presence of God has access for us because of what Jesus did. And so just like we're waiting to see what happens next, the resurrection brings about something that's really, really cool. The verse that comes right after that in verse 8 says, So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. Now, remind me, we had a visitor a couple of weeks ago. Who was that? Super Joy. She came and she didn't talk about joy this time. She talked about something else. She talked about her sidekick. Who remembers? Hope, exactly right. Hope is this confident assurance that God is in control. And here's this opportunity. And what these, two, what these women do is they run back. They run. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but they run to tell the other disciples. They're kind of afraid because this is weird, but they're joyful. And so just like Super Joy was telling us about her sidekick, Hope, with joy, in this case, comes Hope. Hope that we can live forever. Hope that Christ is conquering death. Hope that we can know all that God wants us to know about him. And so as we think about these songs, as we think about where we're going with it, there's this beautiful idea that the resurrection gives us hope. And so look over on the the screen. The stone is kind of peeked away. You see light coming in. Jesus is going to walk out, and he's going, to, he's going to be where people could feel him and touch him. And people are going to be kind of thinking, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But the empty tomb is our hope. I went to Israel several, several years ago and actually got to see inside the tomb, and I can tell you there's nothing in it, just a rock. And I cried and I cried and I cried. And a friend of mine said, why are you crying? This is the most beautiful and hopeful thing we have. And I told her, I've believed this for so many years of my life, but now I'm seeing the empty tomb. The disciples saw the empty tomb. And while we may never see the empty tomb, we can put our hope and our peace and our joy in Christ because of what he did on the cross. And so this gives us reason to celebrate. This gives us reason to praise him. This gives everybody a reason to praise him. And we're going to do that right now. Let's stand together and continue with everybody praise him. Let's go! Yeah. 
John twenty nineteen and twenty. On the evening of that of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. Disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. He has risen! He has risen indeed! All right, we're going to continue our celebration as I invite Miss Kelly's, uh, Miss, Miss Kelly's class up. And uh, let's, let's say a little prayer. God, thank you so much that you have sent Jesus to die on the cross for us and to resurrect from the dead, God. We have hope in this life and in the next because of what he did for us. And we want to honor that today. We want to celebrate that today. Thank you so much for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Let's sing, rise and sing.
right. Thank you, fourth grade, for your leadership today. Thank you for leading us in worship as we've gone through several big pieces. When we get to the end of this big idea, it really is a celebration. It really is meant to be something where we exalt Christ, where we intend to maybe bounce around a little bit, and that's okay, where we look around and we go, you know what? He's given us joy, and He's given us hope, and maybe that shows up in a little bit of bouncing, and that's okay. As we think about the rest of this week, tomorrow is going to be a day called Good Friday, and Good Friday is the beginning of this whole conversation that we've just talked about in about 35 minutes. And on Sunday, if you get to gather with church people, that's going to be the biggest day of it all to really celebrate what Jesus has done. And so today, I just want to end in a time of prayer, and then I'm um, going to ask those of you who are joining us online, grandparents, if you'll hang out for just a little bit. We do have a special, special message for you. We just want to make sure that uh, we transition, because I believe there is an egg hunt and some other things coming in just a little bit. So, Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Jesus, we thank you that as our unexpected king... Um, you have done some unexpected things in Scripture, but the most unexpected is that you rose from the dead. And so as we celebrate that, that our God is alive today, not just 2,000 years ago, but Jesus, you are alive today that gives us hope and joy and reason to follow you. Lord, I thank you for our students. I thank you for our parents and our grandparents. I pray that you would bless them as we go into this Easter weekend. Help us to turn our eyes and our attention and our focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we are going to go ahead and start dismissing uh, and heading classes out, making sure. Uh, and so as you all do that, uh, grandparents, if you'll just hang on for a moment, we have a message for you that will be uh, some for me and then a little bit of a video in a moment. So. Uh, fourth grade, if y'all want to go ahead and head out. Everybody else, you can go ahead and turn off your screens and stuff. Have a great day. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Grandparents, it's, uh, it's been two years since we've had a Grandparents' Day. Um, two years ago, we had this room filled with students, and we had that area, well, we had this room filled with students for Easter Chapel, and then we had the gym filled with grandparents and special friends for uh, one half of the lower school, and then we rotated, and we went and saw the other half, and we went and saw classrooms, and we went and saw teachers, and we got to go play, play outside, and we went to the book fair. And then a year ago, all of that changed, and uh, we saw a lot of things that we weren't quite sure what was going to happen next. We went from an extended spring break to an entire quarter not in school. Uh, many of you um, began taking measures to, to stay healthy yourself. Many of you uh, began looking at things to, to be safe with you and then safe with your family. Um, in some cases, like our family, we had to make some choices on when grandparents got to see grandkids and, and those kinds of things. And I know those challenges were hard. And so uh, even as we've tried to have some things this year, uh, a lot of our activities have continued. Not all of them, but many of them have continued because we wanted to give our students the experience of seeing life continue. And so you've seen most of the time, you've seen them in masks, you've seen them moving about. Um, maybe you've caught a couple of things on the YouTube channel. Um, but today what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a couple of glimpses beyond that. But one group that I really wanted to highlight the most is a group that has been working tirelessly on behalf of our students, and that's their teachers. Um, and if you were here in person, that would be one of the best things of the day would be to go to the classrooms and to meet the teachers. And so um, in just a moment, not just yet, but in just a moment, I'm going to share a video with you that introduces you to all of those hardworking and incredibly gifted teachers who have been with your grandchildren and children um, 
for every day that we've been able to gather. And some of them, many of them have done both in-class learning and doing exactly what we're doing right now, doing a virtual conversation as well. Um, and so the video that I'm gonna show you in just a little bit is actually them before the first day of school. And they didn't know what they were walking into, but what they did know was that they love Jesus and they love kids and they were gonna do whatever it took. And they have, and they continue to do so. And so they're going to get to introduce themselves, uh, all of them, uh, so that you can put a name with a face when your grandchild says, yeah, Coach Scooter did this, or Coach McGivern, does he say, do they call you Coach Lewis or Coach Scooter? Um, Coach Lewis, um, or Coach McGivern did this, or uh, Senora Sanders, you saw leading worship, also teaches our Spanish classes and does about a half a dozen other things, um, or when they're going to STEAM, or when they're going to um, all kinds of different opportunities that they have on campus, music and art. All of those things are things that we want our students to have that life experience. And so one of the things that, uh, as a parent of a fourth grader, uh, one of them was up here today, um, as I think about where we were two years ago and having a full house with grandparents and special friends everywhere, as I think about um, totally not getting to experience that last year, one of the things that I wanted to do is, is put some of campus life in front of you. Now, obviously, there's only so much that we can do with a video, um, and there's only so much that we can show you without taking hours and hours of your time. Uh, but let me tell you and reassure you that campus life has been active and thriving um, since school started back. We've had lots of protocols and lots of things that we've had to walk through, but life on here, life on campus has been blessed. God has been on, God is on his throne and has been helping us walk through all of this. We've had ch challenges and struggles to be sure, but to know that God is on his throne, just as we saw earlier, that uh, he is our reason for hope. And so one of the things as, as I was thinking about each of you as grandparents and parents that I wanted to do at the end of our, our video is I wanted to give you a message of hope, something that I found encouraging, something that I found that was inspiring and something I think that will help you as well. And so with the next 12 minutes or so, um, I just want to encourage you with these words. I want you to see some of these people. I want you to maybe uh, see a kid or two that you know. Um, and because I know that the way the song that we sang earlier was one, you may want to go back again. I placed that in there as well, just so we, you could see your grandkids and your kids living life uh, at school. A lot of our kids in our area aren't getting to to have the same opportunity. And so I'm super excited to share that with you today. So in, without anything else from me, let me pray for your families. Let me pray for this Easter weekend. And then I want to share a video with you. Father, I thank you for our grandparents, our special friends, our parents. God, I thank you for the kids that you have brought to the school and the families that they represent. I pray that you would encourage them today. I pray that those who are the godly legacy givers and grandparents, that they would continue to pass on that legacy to their children and their grandchildren. I pray for those who are, who are searching through that and, and struggling with the last year and some, and some change, that you would give them hope and peace and joy and the reminder that you are still risen and that you are still on your throne. Lord, we thank you. We know that even as we've walked through this difficult time, there have been many who have gone um, through COVID itself, getting sick, and many have, have passed away. And so, Lord, even in that, we offer our heartache to you, and we ask that you would help us to see you even in that as victorious and on your throne. We acknowledge that we need you. We need your peace. We need your joy, and we need your hope. Thank you for Fort Bend Christian Academy. Thank you for blessing us with this place. Help us to live for you in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Coach, can you play a video for me? Welcome to the lower school. We're choosing celebration, breaking into freedom. You're the soul, you're the soul of our hearts. You're the joy, 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 light in my soul. Joy, 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 making me whole though I'm broken. I am running into your arms of
everybody, I'm Miss Perry. Hi, I'm Mrs. Brennan, and we are so excited to see you next week. We're the pre-K team. Yay! Yay! Go Eagles! Hi, Hi guys! guys. We're, the We're the kindergarten, kindergarten team. team. And I'm Mrs. Sutton. I'm Mrs. Dibble. I'm Mrs. Slate. And we are so excited that you're going to be in kindergarten with us this year. Go Eagles! Woo! And we're working really hard in our classrooms to get everything ready for you guys. We can't wait for you to be here. Bye, guys! Woo! Bye! Bye, everybody! I am so excited to see you all next week. This is Mrs. Lemus. Hi, it's Mrs. Perez. I can't wait to see you guys next week. Hey, everybody. This is the first grade team. I'm Mrs. Miller. I'm Mrs. Sandvik. I'm Mrs. Maples. Can't wait to see you. We're excited to see you. Bye. Hi, we're the second grade team. I'm Mrs. Peschel. I'm Miss Underwood. And I'm Mrs. Prado. We can't wait to see you! Go Eagles! Woo! Hi everybody. Hi everybody! We're the third grade team. I'm Mrs. Hodges. I'm Mrs. Pearson. I'm Mrs. Jeffries. We're really excited for you to be back at school. We can't wait to meet you. Go Eagles! F B C A. We can't wait to see you today!
So much has changed since last Easter. The world has been shaken. Life has been disrupted. What we once called normal seems like it may never return. It's been easy to be discouraged, to lose hope, to feel the foundations of our faith begin to crumble. It's hard to keep our feet planted when the ground beneath feels like shifting sand. Now more than ever, we need to stand on the truth of Easter, a day which changed our eternity, changed our world forever. Death was defeated by life. 
my sin was consumed by mercy, the grave was swallowed up by victory. See, even in the darkest of moments, the love of Jesus could not be stopped. His faithfulness could not be broken. And when the dust settled, Jesus, he stood alive and victorious. Today, may we remember the truth of Easter, the power of the resurrection, and the promise of eternity. Yes, the world has been shaken, but the grave, it's still empty. And Jesus, he's still risen.